Welcome to a new video. In this video we will discuss the three-phase inverter. We will work out an example in detail where we see the step-by-step -step calculations and we will verify these in MATLAB Simulink simulations. Okay, this is the inverter we have. In this case we have six switches. This is also called a six-step inverter or 180 degrees conduction inverter. See here one DC input voltage source. A set of six switches. And we have also the three loads here connected in star configuration or it's also called the Y configuration. The nodes A, B and C are the connections towards the loads. We have also the phase currents IA, IB and IC. The value of the VDC is 100 volts. We have here R of 10 ohms and the inductor of 25 milliampere. That is the load here, which is series. Again, the same here and same as for three times the same series RL. The questions are the following. We have, we would like to calculate the RMS line, line voltage, RMS line neutral voltage, load voltage, and so the RMS phase load voltage is actually one of these. We'd like to know what the absorbed load power is for this total load. The average source current, so how much source current here is delivered in average form. The THT, the total harmonic distortion of the load voltage, and also the total harmonic distortion of the load current. The switches, what we see here in total now six, that is similar to the switches we have discussed also for the square wave inverter, where we have four switches. In this case, we will also use a specific uh, switching scheme that is actually shown here. So we see here S1 up to S6, they have a specific switching scheme. You see here for S1 that is conducting, it's closed for 0 to pi, so in this case 180 degrees, because the full period is 2 pi, and the next part it is open. Now you can see that it's S2, which is then this switch, is not closed at the same time as S1, it is closed later, so there is a delay, and that delay is pi over 3. And S3 is then again in addition additional pi over 3 delayed and so we can see that S4, S5 and S6 they're all delayed uh, each by pi over 3 next to each other. So this is a special switching scheme which creates this six step inverter. Now you can also look at the line to line voltages which are the, from A to B, from B to C and also from C to E so you can measure actually between these nodes. These, uh, these are all shown here. This is also the consequence of these switching here. So you see the red line or red curve here which is the line to line between A and B. It is always between VDC and minus VDC. But there, is, there are also parts which are zero. It's also the similar case for the blue one and also for the green one. Okay. Let's see what we need to do here in our calculation to work out these ex uh, problems. The Fourier series for our line to line voltage or line to line load voltage has a fundamental frequency which is equal to the switching frequency. So if our switching frequency is 60 Hz, then the fundamental frequency is also 60 Hz. And the harmonics, so the higher harmonics, are then given by an order which is given by this expression and is equal to 6k plus or minus 1. And k can be 1, 2, 3, so it's an integer. And if you run this by 1, 2, 3, and you substitute that in this uh, expression for the order, you get n is 5, 7, 11, 13, etc. Now let's do, for example, k is 1. If you substitute there 1, you get here 6 times 1, plus or minus 1, that means 6 plus 1, which is then 7, and 6 minus 1, which is then 5. Now the third harmonic, and a three and a multiple of those third harmonic like the ninth harmonic etc etc they are not involved here in the expressions or they are they do not exist and also the even harmonic so the second order fourth order sixth order they are not um, ex they are not existing in the Fourier series of this expression for line to line voltage so that's perfect so we actually lose more harmonics than before so our THC will definitely be better than before Okay, the first one is the RMS line to line voltage. First question A, and that is given, the amplitudes are given by this expression. You can see here again the VDC, the pi and the denominator and also the n. So this part for four times VDC over m pi, we have seen this before also with the square wave um, inverter. Well, now we have a cosine with the n pi over six, this 
configuration is because of this switching scheme. And here is n dot order. So it can be one because it is the fundamental. It can be five, it can be seven, etc. etc. So that is actually given by this expression. Okay. Now we move on and also look at, for example, for one, you just substitute here for one, and also VDC will be 100, so you will get this expression. And that will give you 110.27 volts. In similar case for NS5, you substitute here NS5 here, and you get now 22.053 volts. Similar case for NS7 and NS11. These are all amplitudes of the harmonic, so the fundamental, fifth harmonic, seventh and eleventh harmonic. When you now want to calculate the RMS value, you take each frequency component and divide by a square root of 2 because they are pure sine waves. So you get now here the 77.97 volts. The next one is this one, 15.594 volts. And you can go on and actually calculate now all the RMS values. Okay. Let's now calculate the actual uh, RMS line to line load voltage, which is then the squaring each term here, in this case RMS, adding up and then take the square root. This is only given here for four terms, but you need to go in theory up to the infinity. In this case I have done that, so you see that here, and this is now calculated as 81.528 volts, but this is up to NS101, so you need to really go up to high uh, order, so you need to take more terms than, let's say, before. Next is the RMS line neutral load voltage given by this and the amplitude of the line neutral voltage is given by this expression which is because that is the expression for line to line voltage harmonics over square root of three so this is then square root of three times smaller than what we had before so you can effectively actually calculate now the rms line neutral load voltage directly by taking this value or actually this value directly and divide that by square root of three that's actually shown here and that will be then just this value over square root of three again up to n is 101 you get now 47.04070 okay moving on and to the next question which is rms phase load current and that is in effect given by the ohm's law in this case, we need the impedance because we have the harmonics for the load voltage and you also need the harmonics for the load current. In this case, these are the phase currents. So here is the series combination for each load, which is our resistor and inductor reactants. And we have the fundamental frequency 120 pi radius per second from 2 pi times F. Okay, this is now the table we can generate. We see here a lot of information. The first one is N, the column, which are the order of the harmonics 1 5 7 11 13 17 and 19 so this is the fundamental and then the higher harmonics you see also the frequencies so 1 times 60 5 times 60 and etc these are the line to line uh, harmonic components of the load voltage for each n1 ns5 etc and these are for the line to neutral voltage harmonics amplitudes you see here the RMS value for this part. So you actually take this and you divide by square root of three. You take two, I mean, you take this one, divide by square root of two. In a similar form, you go actually one by one. The impedance is calculated straightforward. You take this, you put here 10, and you do one for the first row. And this is always 120 pi, and this is 0 0.025. 25. So you can actually this, and you take it for NS1, NS5, etc., and you create this column. This is calculated this, this current here, the amplitude for the current by using Ohm's law. You take this, so V O N L N, so actually the line to neutral harmonic voltages, divide this by the impedance, and you get there your current, and that will be the amplitude. And you, when you want to go to the RMS, you divide each term here by a square root of two. So taking this column for our question C, we can calculate our phase load current RMS that's actually shown here so you see actually the first harmonic fifth seventh eleventh etc and this will be then calculated here of course you go up to higher harmonics in this case you get 3.2831 amps but it's also up to NS101 so I actually use more terms than I can write here and this is then the result 
The next one, question D, is about absorbed low power that is given by, in a similar case, actually, as we have done before, again, the load current RMS squared times R, but then this times three times because we have three loads in this configuration. Now, when you do that, you get here 323.4 watts. The average source current can be calculated straightforward by using the power balance. And in an ideal case, we can say the input power is equal to the output power. So the output power is our load power. And input power is because of this VDC. And then times its average source current. So IS times VDC is then the load power, absorbed load power. And the average source current will be then the PO. So the load power absorbed divided by the VDC. That will give you then this value 3.234 amps. Okay, and now move on to the next question about the THT for the load voltage that's actually given by this expression. Now you see here the RMS line neutral voltage and the first harmonic of the RMS uh, line to neutral voltage. We have everything because this is calculated from question B that's shown here and this here is shown here. So actually you can take it and put it here and then you get now 0 0.30554 and THD of the load current in a similar form. You take now the RMS line to neutral current and the first harmonic of the line to neutral current RMS. And that's shown here, the first harmonic. And you substitute now the values. This is here for the line to neutral RMS current in total. And you get now here 0 0.066360 close to 6.64%. Okay, let's now go to the simulation results. This is the circuit in the simulink. You see here the six switches, DC voltage source, 100 volts, and this is the generator pulse generators to create the switching scheme we have discussed here, we have seen here. And these are the loads, three loads, R, L, R, L, R, L, so A, B, and C for each phase. I also have a scope here, which will be then in the next slide, you can see the graphs and you see now here one by one what we have, because the first one will is here the RMS line line load voltage, which is 81.65, that is really from here. So this is actually between these two, you see here 81.53, so very close to what we have. The next one is about the RMS line neutral load voltage, that is going here and that is actually uh, if I go up, it's actually this one. So we take only this. It is within 47.070 volts, which is close to what we have. You can say there's a small error. That is because we end up here at N is 101. So we go to order 101, but then you need to actually go to infinite. And that is the reason for we that, that we have a small error here. The next one is about the RMS phase load current. That is the C. It is also very close to what we have calculated. The THT for line neutral load voltage is the here, so that is also very close what we have, so almost 0.31. And the THT for the current is here, that's 0.06637, so very close to what we have calculated. So we can say this is all checked. The next one is about the graphs. We see here the graphs for the source current, the first one, the load current, in this case specifically IC, but you can also take IE or RB, it doesn't matter. Here we have the um, one of the phase voltages, so at the output, so that means from C to N, so from C to neutral, there's actually this yellow, and this pink uh, curve is the from B to C, that's actually like line voltage. That's all shown here. You see indeed that we have this staircase uh, part. You also see, for example, for the pink one, that is indeed between 100 and minus 100, but the yellow one, which is our phase to the, the, this node to the uh, neutral, so the phase load voltage, that is not going to 100, that is actually going to two thirds of the 100, and also going down to two thirds of the minus 100. So there is a, a peak, peak value which is two thirds of the peak value of your VDC, or actually the value of the VDC. What you also see here is that the green curve, which is our load current, is getting closer and closer to a nice sine wave. So by using this three-phase inverter and this switching scheme here, we have improved our waveform for our load current. That's also seen from the THD of the load current. That is approximately 6.6%, .6%, which is pretty fine. But if you want to improve that, going to 1% or even lower, 
then we can use different switching schemes or going to the multi-level three-phase inverter configurations. All right, this was our example concerning the three-phase inverter using this six-step. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share our videos such that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.